Hi everyone, we are now cruising through the second trimester, which I have to say has been much better than the first, feeling more like myself and having more energy. Yep. Um, and we're also cruising through our week by week pregnancy guide as we go through pregnancy for the first time ourselves. Yeah, so this week we're covering something we get a lot of questions about, just like generally vaccines and pregnancy. We hear questions like, should I get the flu vaccine if I'm pregnant? When is the best time to get Tdap? What about MMR? Yep. And this week we're also going to be talking a little bit more about the COVID vaccine, which we spent a lot of time a couple weeks ago talking all about that vaccine in pregnancy. Yep. And we've got some new updated information that we'll be sure to share at the end of this video. Right after this. Just in case this is your first time meeting us, I'm Kurt, I'm a pediatrician. And I'm Sarah, and I am an OBGYN, and I am also 21 weeks pregnant. And so we have been sharing our expertise as doctors, and also what we are learning along the way as first-time parents um, with all of you guys in these weekly videos. Yeah. So as we mentioned a couple weeks ago, we spent a ton of time in a whole episode specifically about COVID and pregnancy, yep. and then had two additional episodes talking about the new mRNA vaccines mm -hmm. for COVID, their use in pregnancy and with a seven most frequently asked questions episode talking about the use of these vaccines when pregnant, breastfeeding, or trying to conceive. If you missed any of those, please go back and check them out. Yeah, so this week we want to focus specifically on some of the other vaccines that you will be offered during your prenatal care and why they're important. So let's talk really quickly about what a vaccine is and what they do. Yeah. So we currently have vaccines against all sorts of different germs, both bacteria and viruses. And the goal of a vaccine is to give your body a chance to be prepared to fight one of these germs should it be exposed to it, to either limit the effects of that disease illness or hopefully prevent you from getting that illness at all. So when we get sick, our bodies naturally make these specific cells to help us fight those germs um, to prevent illness and help us get better. Uh, they also make these special memory cells and antibodies that help our body remember that specific germ so that if we ever encounter it again, it knows what to do and has the tools to fight that. Yeah. So again, the goal of the vaccine is to give your, chance, your body a chance to make these memory cells and antibodies so that you can fight that virus or bacteria as soon as you're exposed without ever having to be exposed to it in the first place. Um, so vaccines do this in a couple different ways. Uh, we've got vaccines that either use a non-functional piece of the germ itself or a non-functional um, weakened version of that germ too to help give your immune system that chance to get started to form that defense for any future exposures. So we have all these different types of vaccines, but the most important question is, are they safe? Yep. And are they safe in pregnancy? We'll get so to that. as it is, vaccines are one of the most thoroughly tested medical products in use in the U.S. today. Before a vaccine can be approved by the FDA, it has to go through rigorous testing mm -hmm. in thousands of thousands of individuals. Yep. And as it is, the vaccines we currently use today have been in use for a while and have been shown to be effective and safe in tens and tens of thousands of individuals and have had significant effect in limiting disease in our population. Correct. Now, with any medical procedure or medication, there are potential risks. Um, but the data shows us over and over again that the risks of these vaccines are significantly lower than the risks associated with getting some of these diseases like the flu or whooping cough or these different things. Yeah. And so you may know someone or may have read a story online about someone who believes they were injured by a vaccine. Yeah. We are in no way saying that isn't possible. We're right. just saying that these are very rare occurrences. Mm -hmm. And for the vast majority of people, it is yeah. much better to get the vaccine to be safe from that disease yes. uh, than the, any like, minimal potential risk of getting that vaccine. So some vaccines are okay to get in pregnancy and are safe, and some are not. The vaccines that are considered safe are the inactivated flu shot, uh, Tdap, Hep A or Hep B if you need it. The vaccines that are not considered safe are MMR and varicella or chickenpox, and we've talked about those are live vaccines, so not good to get in pregnancy, um, as well as HPV is not recommended right now. 
There are many other things you can be vaccinated for, and if you are traveling out of the country or going somewhere where you may be recommended to get one of those vaccines, you just need to sit down and talk with your OBGYN about risk versus benefit of those vaccines for you on an individual basis. And so we're going to take the next couple of minutes to talk about the two vaccines you absolutely should get in pregnancy, being Tdap mm -hmm. and the flu vaccine to protect both you and your developing baby and pass on some of that protection to baby after birth too. Yeah. Um, and then we're also going to take a little bit of time again just to recap the COVID vaccine yeah. and what went into our decision making for Sarah to get hers. So let's start with the flu vaccine. There are a variety of different types of flu vaccine you can get. The one that's recommended in pregnancy is an inactivated vaccine, the flu shot. Yeah. And so women who are pregnant should actually be prioritized yeah. to get the flu vaccine during flu season. So starting late fall uh, through early spring. Um, and this is because women who are pregnant, even though uh, young women are usually minimally affected yeah. by the flu, um, when you're pregnant, there's some physiologic changes that make you more at risk to get severe disease from the flu. Yeah, we know that moms who are pregnant and get the flu get much sicker. They're more likely to get admitted to an ICU. They're more likely to die. Um, and this is if you are pregnant or early postpartum. So it is recommended that every pregnant woman get the flu shot whenever it is available, um, no matter what trimester you're in. And if you do get influenza when you are pregnant, it is recommended that you seek treatment right away to start an antiviral as soon as possible to try to limit that illness from getting really severe. In addition to being good for mom, mm -hmm. getting that vaccine is also good for the developing baby. Yes. There's a couple reasons for this. There's been some data that has shown mm -hmm. that uh, influenza-like illness in the first trimester can be associated with increased rates of congenital defects. Yeah. Um, also, some things that we know that if mom gets very severely sick, like in an ICU sick, mm -hmm. baby is at an increased risk for a low birth weight, yeah. um, stillbirth, miscarriage, mm -hmm. uh, fetal death, preterm delivery, or preterm delivery. Yeah. All right, here are some quick facts about the flu vaccine. Yep. So first off, you cannot get the flu from the flu vaccine. Right. Um, you may feel lousy for a day after yeah. getting the shot. Mm -hmm. That is just your body's immune response doing what it needs to do to protect you from future illness. Yeah. You may get the flu even if you didn't get the flu vaccine. Um, but generally speaking, if you do get the flu after getting the vaccine, it is a much less severe illness and you are much less likely to be admitted to a hospital because you are sick. Yeah. Getting the flu vaccine during pregnancy can actually help keep baby safe. Mm -hmm. so there's some evidence to show that babies at a decreased risk of getting the flu themselves after birth if mom got the vaccine. And this is because mom is able to pass some of those protective antibodies across the placenta yep. um, and also may pass some additional protection through her breast milk. Yep. Side effects do occur, uh, but they are rarely severe. Mm -hmm. These vaccines absolutely do not cause autism. Nope. Um, and finally, there is no evidence that the very small amount of a mercury-based preservative that is used in multi-dose uh, vials of vaccines cause any harm. Um, to be safe, they've been eliminated from all pediatric vaccines. Um, and if you are concerned about having a preservative in your flu shot, then ask for the preservative free version, um, which exists. It's just like a single dose vial of the flu shot instead of getting one from a multi-dose vial. The other really important vaccine to get in pregnancy is the Tdap vaccine. And the most important part of this vaccine is that P, the pertussis part. Um, and this is because pertussis is so incredibly dangerous to young infants. Well, it just might cause a nasty prolonged cough in you or I. Um, in infants, it can absolutely 100% cause death to a young baby who doesn't yet have robust immune response. Right. It's also really important that everyone who's gonna be caring for a baby or around baby has this vaccine up to date as well. Most importantly, with that pertussis vaccine, again, cocooning baby, um, as baby can't get that vaccine themselves when they're first born, right. um, but if you can hopefully keep everyone around them free of pertussis, can help keep baby safe from this potentially lethal disease. Because studies have shown that over 50% of the time, babies get pertussis from their immediate caregivers. Mm -hmm. Um, additionally, it is recommended that you get the Tdap vaccine in each pregnancy, even if you are 
immune to pertussis, and even if you were just pregnant less than 12 months ago, um, the recommendation is to repeat this every pregnancy between 27 and 36 weeks so that you pass that pertussis immunity onto your baby. And the perfect time to get this vaccine actually is when you're about 32 weeks pregnant. Um, and this is because we think that, or we know that mom's IgG levels peak at around four That's weeks nice. after that vaccines. Mm -hmm. And those IgG, that those antibodies can pass the placenta to baby so that the moment baby is born there already have some degree of protection from pertussis. Exactly. So circling back to a couple of those live vaccines that we said you shouldn't get in pregnancy being the MMR vaccine or the chickenpox varicella vaccines. So again, you can't get those in pregnancy because they are live vaccines, um, but your doctor will check your immunity to those for chickenpox and measles, mumps, and rubella, usually at your during your first trimester labs. Um, it's ideal if you are not immune that you get those vaccines before you get pregnant, um, but sometimes you may find yourself pregnant and not immune to measles, mumps, rubella, um, and the chickenpox. It's important to know um, if you are not immune um, because if you are exposed to chickenpox or you are exposed to the measles, you're in contact with someone you find out has chickenpox or has measles, it is so important to let your OBGYN know right away because they are want, going to want to give you post-exposure prophylaxis or medication to prevent you from getting that infection because they are very, very, very dangerous in pregnancy. Yep. And they're also very dangerous to a developing fetus yes. as well. And so there's even more reason to be careful with these specific uh, germs. So there's a lot of drama around vaccines, um, I would say. Which I don't know if we fully understand where that comes from and why there's so much mistrust yeah. in some places about vaccines. Yeah. Um, and so if that's something that you feel really strongly about, yeah. um, we're happy to hear from you and chat about that some more. Yeah. Um, but I think for, for us and our families and kind of the knowledge that we have from years of medical training and our own personal experience um, kind of shows that like, gosh, there's so much data to say that these are safe and effective and have yeah. like literally helped eradicate certain diseases in the world. Yeah. And so why not reduce our chances of getting sick ourselves, um, getting our loved ones sick and like hopefully protect our new baby that's about yeah, to enter the Yeah, our tiny world. little baby. Um, I got the flu vaccine in the first trimester. Um, I got the COVID vaccine in the second trimester. Um, I'll be due for Tdap here any minute um, in the third trimester. Um, and there's just, from my mama heart to you, I believe in these vaccines. I believe it's safer for my kid to get them and I would yeah. recommend it to my sister and myself and I'm not peddling anything for anyone. I just passionately believe that it's yeah, and I think it's more than a belief for us, too, that we've got data to show that right. this is going to be the safest thing. Yeah. Um, absolutely, there may be a story, and maybe you were personally yeah. affected or something, or had some uh, terrible thing happen after getting a vaccine. Um, and for that, you have our hearts for sure. Yeah. Um, but we know that in the vast majority of people, that getting these vaccines is going to be safest for you and baby and carry very little risk. So as promised, just to circle back um, a little bit about the new COVID vaccines in pregnancy. If you missed it, please check out our previous video all about these vaccines in pregnancy mm -hmm. uh, and why they might be a good idea for you if you're pregnant. Yes. So since that video, the DART data, which is developmental and um, reproductive toxicity studies, which are studies that are done with vaccines in animals, so mice or rats, mm -hmm. have come out for the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines and have there have been no warning signals or any adverse outcomes in pregnant and lactating rats. Yeah. So again, while we don't yet have enough human data to say that they are absolutely 100% safe in pregnancy, our data from our animal studies, and what we believe we know about how these vaccine wounds work, um, show that they should be safe to you and your developing fetus if you get them during pregnancy. Um, but please check out our previous episode for more discussion and information about this. Yeah. But um, that's it for us this week. That's everything about vaccines and pregnancy. If you have any questions, please leave them below.
Otherwise, yeah. we'll see you next week. Yeah. Make sure you hit subscribe. Yes, please. Bye, guys. Bye. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.